and I'd like to introduce you to our KBNF friends and family. This is John Hi. Dabrowski, Hi. and he is the chairman of the Board of Compassionate Warehouse in Victoria. <laughs> when you fill a container, it's like growing a wall all the way out. Every inch is filled with something. We try to build it so it's not it's safe for the people who are unloading, so it doesn't come down. And it's for the safety of the of the people, but it's also for the goods that they don't get damaged, because that's easy to do. One of the hospitals I was at, there was a man who came in with a machete cut, and of course I immediately went to get supplies to put gauze and stop, and my hand was taken away. If he stops bleeding, he'll bleed. And to watch someone bleed into a can, a garbage can, when I knew it all the boxes and boxes, but they only had the big one. And that was such a difference for me because I came from a place where there was always more. It started from uh, a group of people uh, going to Honduras uh, after a storm. And when they went there, they just said, we have to help. Came back and began on their first container. From there, it's just grown. And how many containers have you now sent overseas? We're over 370. We had a wonderful afternoon mm -hmm. taking Dr. Francis Pate from Liberia mm -hmm. on a tour of your compassionate warehouse. Mm -hmm. And he was blown away. Mm -hmm. And one of the moments that seemed to be so dramatic for him and for me was when he found your box of tape. Oh! <laughs> and he was looking at it. He was holding tape in his fingers and said, oh, Sometimes in our hospital, we don't have a piece of tape. And it's so hard to know how to even put a dressing on somebody yeah. when you have no tape. And it started with the Canadian military. A man by the name of Mark, his mom would knit these dolls for him and he'd carry them in his pocket and hand them out to children on the street. Wow. And when he died over there, his fellow soldiers wrote his mom and said, we'd like to carry on the tradition. And that's how they came to be called Izzy Dolls. And it moved from there into helping all the different uh, humanitarian needs. Just come and see. I can come over here and tell you whatever I want to see. But when you come and see, that add additional value to what you do. Mm -hmm. So please think about it. If we pack it tightly, nothing moves. And that's what you want. For some, it's, you know, it's not very far from the port where it's unloaded, but other places, I like guess it's got a long road trip to make before it gets home. Now I'd like to introduce Dal and Francis. Here we are in Victoria, as we actually get to express our appreciation for desire that the launch of a first container is going to turn into many containers to come. I remember a couple of weeks ago when I was back in Liberia, we were loading the container you're able to the compassion that you have and that you have instilled in your team members to do what they are doing for us is something that is unbelievable was I think adequate to express how appreciated I am and my people will be when I continue to arrive. Just want to say thank you so much and this is why I'm here today. Oh. <laughs> what a privilege. It is. Yes.